Ah, Siren Head. We probably know enough facts to write our own wiki articles at this point, but hey, there's always something more to learn. In an effort to make you all a little more encyclopedic, let's discover some of the weirder and wilder facts about this crazy cryptid. Just remember that this fact reigns above all. Siren Head was made by Trevor Henderson, and if you like the beast, you should support the artist. I'll link his social media in the description. Hello horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Top 5 Bizarre Siren Head Facts. Before we get started, we've got an exciting message from today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. That's right, you've got almost 500 champions to collect in this expansive and constantly updating RPG. Remember collecting stuff like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards as a kid? Well, you'll get that same feeling playing Raid. Take a look, we'll open some shards. Alright, let's get this going. Who's up? Fleshmonger. Very nice. Big lad. Big axe. Love it. All right, next shard. Oh, very nice. Frozen Banshee. I love an ice character. Love the spear. Let's get it. Oh, very nice. Courtier looks like a Dark Souls character. If you really want to level up quickly, farm the campaign. The missions are a great way to grab tons of XP and silver, all while playing through a gripping story. They just added champion fragments, which are a great way to summon specific awesome champions. There's also a new bazaar, where you can load up on high value items with the gold bars you win in Tag Arena. Plus, their daily login bonuses have been extended to 270 days, and you can earn wicked champs just for logging in. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description and click on the special link. If you're a new player, you'll get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, one free energy refill, one clan boss key, five mystery shards, one day XP booster, and a free champion, Hexweaver. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. This stuff will only be available for the next 30 days, so hurry up. Wicked, let's get to our list. Coming in at number five, it kills in unexpected ways. Most monsters have a signature kill move, right? They'll eat people, or tear them limb from limb, or suck the soul right out of their body. But Siren Head? Siren Head is different. We've seen it shambling off in the distance plenty, but to see it actually attack someone is quite rare. Getting the moment of death on camera is even less common. So how does Siren Head kill? We won't even begin with the why, because who can say why a monster acts like a monster? Plus, it seems to hunt for fun, which is something nobody wants to think about. While it is hard to catch Siren Head in the act of killing, we can take a look at the messes it leaves behind for some clues. All sorts of different bodies have been discovered over time with plenty of odd outcomes. One famous finding had a victim placed way up in the higher branches of a tree. At first it appeared they had climbed up there to hide, and they were clutching onto the branch for dear life. However, when rescue crews got up and took a closer look, a different story presented itself. The individual up there had been placed there and had something wrong with their head. Their eyes, eardrums, and other assorted soft tissue had been totally blown out, almost as if there was a sound that was simply too loud for the human body to handle. It's not too far of a stretch to say that Siren Head uses sonic weapons when hunting folks down. Like one would assume that it would pick up someone and tear him apart based on its gigantic physiology and all, but the sound-based violence is another terrifying possibility. This happened again when a larger, more imposing version of Siren Head made its way through a suburban neighborhood. It entered no homes, but all sorts of people around were found dead with similar soft tissue trauma. Now this isn't to say that Siren Head only kills with sound. It has been seen being more directly, physically violent. It's not even mentioning the weird tooth-filled mouth found inside its sirens. So yeah, Siren Head can kill you in all sorts of different ways, and there isn't all that much you can do about it. Isn't that fun to think about? Coming in at number four, we've got most Siren Head games are bootlegs. You heard it here first, folks. If you find a Siren Head game on the Play Store or maybe come across a crazy Ichio experience, you're probably looking at an unofficial, unvenerated recreation of Siren Head. You've kind of got to expect that at this point. We're in the age of infinite content online and people are happy to make whatever will please the masses. Sometimes there's a genuine love for the horror creature behind the scenes, and sometimes it's a quick cash in by someone who knows how to work with 3D models. When the Siren Head boom began way back when, the first really popular game to feature the Lanky Lad was the PS1 style Modus Interactive number. It came out all the way back in October 2018 and was a submission to a Halloween themed game jam. It's hard to believe that Siren Head's been around that long, eh? The folks behind this game got Trevor Henderson's blessing and didn't charge people any money to play it. Since then, things have got a little muddy. It seems that a brand new and by 
like brand new, I mean Thinly Veiled Ripoff, another popular game, Siren Head game pops up every week, often attached to sketchy promises of commercial releases. In fact, there's a whole subset of Siren Head bootleg drama that I don't feel like getting into today. Needless to say, unless Trevor himself is endorsing a Siren Head game, you can probably consider it a shameless cash-in. The irony of saying that is not lost on me, folks, don't you worry. And don't get me started on the Siren Head mods for Minecraft and Roblox. I mean, some do present a base resemblance of the iconic horror creature, but others are just kind of lame. Let's leave it at that. Coming in at number three, we've got Siren Head could kick Slenderman's butt. Controversial, I know, but you can't just bring up one without comparing it to the other these days. They're both tall, they're both creepy, they're both found in the woods, they're both born from the chaotic internet mythos of horror. But Siren Head is the newest iteration, and it's been rebuilt faster, better, stronger. And while Slenderman probably had a more organic rise to fame, with a few more extremely creepy web series relying less on jump scares and oversaturation, Siren Head is the apex predator here. Maybe they could live together in some sort of symbiotic harmony, but if the latter of the two decided that it wanted to go solo, there'd be no questioning the victor. Slenderman does a pretty good job of stalking folks and making them paranoid, for sure. He can cause descent into madness like no other and tends to amass a mindless following with ease. However, these kinds of things are mostly dangerous to humans. Siren Head, on the other hand, is an absolute unit. Tall as a telephone pole, covered in hardened skin stuff, and able to bust people's soft tissue no problem, it would handily win any fight against any pale, tall person. Plus, there may or may not be many different Siren Heads out there, so there's a numbers game to consider as well. You can argue for hours over who's scarier and what the cooler creature truly is, but you can't deny the true supernatural power that Siren Head holds. I doubt Slenderman could even phase the loud lad. Coming in at number two, we've got Siren Head is not an SCP. You may have heard this before, but it bears repeating. Siren Head is not an SCP. Siren Head is a copyrighted creature made by Trevor Henderson. However, it's been closely associated with the SCP Foundation, I suppose, because they're both creepy and therefore has a lot of folks convinced that it is indeed an anomaly. Despite numerous efforts by those who know better, the Siren Head SCP Brigade continues to staunchly believe that it is an SCP, and if it's not an SCP, then someday it will be. Again, I must dissuade you of these illusions. Siren Head is its own creature, entirely separate from the collaborative writing community that makes up the SCP universe. Now some of you might be thinking, hey, what if someone decided to write up a Siren Head SCP entry and it got vetted as an official SCP anomaly? And to that I say, I guess? But in the end, it's extremely unlikely that the scenario would happen. So don't think too much about that one. And finally at number one, we've got Siren Head is heading into cities. That's right. Way back in the far off year of 2018, Siren Head had made waves, and by waves I mean noises in the woods. That's where you could find this fascinating creature. It was forest based through and through, eating hikers, confusing campers, and luring children away from their rural homes. That's where it seemed scariest. It could blend in with the trees, as most folks would likely just mistake its body for another tree trunk. Plus, it's unlikely that anyone would look up and see the sirens. Add in its unearthly ability to stay still for extended periods of time, and you've got a forest predator extraordinaire. However, it can't just stay there forever, now can it? Soon enough, folks would feel a little too safe in their suburban homes and urban apartments. Siren Head would have to hoof it to somewhere new. A lot of art, especially that coming from the official source, now depicts Siren Head taking on new forms and venturing into the suburbs and herbs. It might take the form of a telephone pole or a streetlight or any other piece of common infrastructure. One might think that it'd be easy to pick out a monster like that in the city because it has nowhere to hide. But to that, Siren Head asks when the last time you really looked up to the top of a streetlight was. Urban camouflage taking advantage of our daily complacency. Now that's scary. Are your ears perked up, straining to catch the slightest echo of a siren now? Yeah, me too. It's a hard world out there for a monster knower. Well, what'd you think of the list? Did you know all these things about Siren Head already? Have you ever seen one in person? Do you follow Trevor on social media? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more combative ones from the top five scary urban legends from Canada. Antonia Delgado says, we summon a Canadian demon. It just said a. Sure, it might've seemed like that's all it did, but did you go and check up on your maple syrup? Something tells me you might want to buy a fresh bottle just in case. Random Street Theater says, if the monster hurts cats, I would go looking and kick its business. And by business, I mean testicles, right? The Unituber says, I worked in Canada for three years and cannot believe that an actual Canadian like you somehow failed to list the most horrifying Canuck urban legend of them all. The man who never says sorry. I'm sorry. 
Christopher Merlot says, fun fact, the Cabbage Town Tunnel Monster is my great uncle. We don't talk about him much over tea. What about over wine though? That's where the real family drama tends to come out. And Batboy Lib says, hello from Moose Factory, Ontario, Canada. Ah, Moose Factory. I watched a short film about Christmas there once. I think it's still free on the NFB site. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I really piss off a leprechaun, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more odd entities. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.